23, on the reason. But both in the intellect and in the will reason stands forth as the loud sound of the soul, which makes known every work of God or man. For sound carries words on high, as the wind lifts the eagle so that it can fly. Thus the soul utters the sound of reason in the hearing and the understanding of humanity, that its powers may be understood and its every work brought to perfection. But the body is the tabernacle and support of all the powers of the soul, since the soul resides in the body and works with the body, and the body with it, whether for good or for evil. 24. On the Senses It is the senses on which the interior powers of the soul depend, so that these powers are known through them by the fruits of each work. The senses are subject to these powers, since they guide them to the work, but the senses do not impose work on the powers, for they are their shadow and do what pleases them. The exterior human being awakens with senses in the womb of his mother before he is born, but the other powers of the soul still remain in hiding. What is this? The dawn announces the daylight just so the human senses manifest the reason and all the powers of the soul. And as on the two commandments of God hang all the law and the prophets, so also on the soul and its powers depend the human senses. What does this mean? The law is ordained for human salvation, and the prophets show forth the hidden things of God so also human senses protect a person from harmful things and lay bare the soul's interior. For the soul emanates the senses. How? It vivifies a person's face and glorifies him with sight, hearing, taste, smell and touch, so that by this touch he becomes watchful in all things. For the senses are the sign of all the powers of the soul, as the body is the vessel of the soul. What does this mean? A person is recognized by his face, sees with his eyes, hears with his ears, opens his mouth to speak, feels with his hands, walks with his feet and so the senses are to a person as precious stones and as a rich treasure sealed in a vase. But as the treasure within is known when the vase is seen, so also the powers of the soul are inferred by the senses. 25. That the soul is the mistress and the flesh the handmaid. The soul is the mistress, the flesh the handmaid. How? The soul rules the body by vivifying it, and the body is ruled by this vivification, for if the soul did not vivify the body it would fall apart and decay. But when a person does an evil deed and the soul knows it, it is as bitter for the soul as poison is for the body when it knowingly takes it. But the soul rejoices in a sweet deed as the body delights in sweet food. And the soul flows through the body like sap through a tree. What does this mean? By the sap, the tree grows green and produces flowers and then fruit. And how is this fruit matured? By the air's tempering. How? The sun warms it, the rain waters it, and thus by the tempering of the air it is perfected. What does this mean? The mercy of God's grace, like the sun, will illumine the person, the breath of the Holy Spirit, like the rain, will water him, and so discernment, like the tempering of the air, will lead him to the perfection of good fruits. 26. Analogy of a tree to the soul. The soul in the body is like sap in a tree, and the soul's powers are like the form of the tree. How? The intellect in the soul is like the greenery of the tree's branches and leaves, the will like its flowers, the mind like its bursting firstfruits, the reason like the perfected mature fruit, and the senses like its size and shape. And so a person's body is strengthened and sustained by the soul. Hence, O oh human, understand what you are in your soul, you who lay aside your good intellect and try to liken yourself to the brutes. 27. The soul inclined to sin leaves it when stung with remorse. But you, O oh human who are seeing these things, consider also that many whirlwinds assail one of these globes in a body and bow it down to the ground. This means that as long as a person lives in soul and body, his soul is disturbed by many invisible temptations, which incline it to sins of earthly desire through the pleasure of the flesh. But that globe, gaining back its strength and bravely raising itself up, resists them boldly because when the faithful and careful person sins, by God's gift he is often stung with remorse and forsakes his sin placing his hope in God, he rejects the devil's lies and faithfully seeks his creator as the faithful soul truly showed when it lamented its miseries as above. 28. The soul tempted by the devil evades his darts by celestial inspiration. 
And you see that many whirlwinds rush upon another of these globes and try to throw it down, but cannot. This means that the devil assails this soul with many snares, trying to draw it into many sins and crimes, but cannot by his illusions prevail over it for it resists strongly and gives them no room to rage that is, fortifying itself with celestial inspiration, it drives away the darts of lying deception and hastens back to its savior, as it declared in the words of its complaint quoted above. 29. The soul that forsakes its body awaits its sentence with great fear. And, as you see, another of the globes frees itself from the lineaments of the form it is in and unties all its bonds. This means that the soul, forsaking the members of its bodily dwelling, breaks its relationship with them when the time comes for the body's dissolution. And with a groan it draws itself out of them and breaks away lamenting from its abode for, taking itself out of the body with anguish, it tremblingly allows its habitation to fall, dreading the imminent tribunal of the celestial judge, at which it will perceive by God's just judgment the merits of its works, as it too shows in its complaint already quoted. That is why, when it has thus freed itself, there come certain spirits, some of light and some of darkness, who have been its life's companions according to its behavior in its abode because in that dissolution, when a person's soul forsakes its habitation, by God's just and true ordinance both good and evil angelic spirits are present who have observed its deeds done in the body by means of the body. They wait for its release so that they can lead it away with them for they await the sentence of the just judge on that soul when it is separated from the body, so when it leaves the body they lead it where the celestial judge will judge it on the merits of its deeds, as has been faithfully demonstrated, O oh human, to you. 30. Words of God to Humanity that they should obey the divine precepts. Therefore, O oh my dearest children, open your eyes and ears and obey my precepts. Why do you despise your Father, who has delivered you from death? The choirs of angels sing, You are just, O oh Lord. Psalm 118 verse 137, Because God's justice has no flaw in it for God delivered man not by power but by mercy, when he sent his Son into the world to redeem him. No smear of dung soils the sun and likewise no wickedness of injustice can touch God. But you, O oh human, with reflective knowledge consider good and evil. What are you when you soil yourself with many desires of the flesh? And what are you when the brightest gems of the virtues shine in you? The first angel despised good and desired evil therefore he received it, dying into eternal perdition and being entombed in death for rejecting the good. But the good angels condemned evil and loved good, seeing the fall of the devil, who wanted to overthrow the truth and set up a lie. Thus they burned with love of God and firmly based themselves on all that is good, so that they wanted nothing but what pleased God, never ceasing to praise him. The first man also knew God and loved him in simplicity and, receiving his precepts, set himself to obey but then he inclined toward evil and committed disobedience. For when the devil suggested evil to him, he forsook good and perpetrated evil, and hence he was cast out of paradise. Therefore, evil must be thrown down into the perdition of death, and good embraced in love of life. But you, O oh human, when you consider good and evil, are standing, as it were, where two roads branch off. If you despise the darkness of evil and want to see him whose creature you are, and whom you acknowledged in holy baptism where the old sin of Adam was nullified in you and if you say, I want to fly from the devil and his works and follow the true God and his precepts, then think how you have been taught to turn away from evil and do good, and how the Heavenly Father did not spare his only begotten but sent him for your deliverance and pray to God to help you. And he, hearing you, will say, These eyes are pleasing to me. And if you then cast off weariness and run courageously in God's commands, he will always hear the cry of your prayers. Therefore you should subdue your flesh and subjugate it to the rule of the soul. But you say, I have in my flesh so many great burdens that I cannot conquer myself but since God is good, he will make me good. How can I subdue my flesh, being human? God is good he will perfect all good things in me. For when it pleases him, he can make me good. But I say to you, if God is good, why do you put such little value on knowing his goodness? which gave his son over to deliver you by many sorrows and labors from death. When you say that you cannot do good works, you speak in unjust wickedness. For you have eyes to see with, ears to hear with, a heart to think with, hands to work with and feet to walk with, so that with your body, you can stand up and lie down, 
sleep and wake, eat and fast. Thus God created you. Therefore, resist the desires of your flesh, and God will help you. For when you set yourself against the devil like a strong warrior against his enemy, God delights in your struggle, wanting you to invoke him in every hour, in all your troubles, constantly. But when you do not try to subdue your flesh, you make it feast with vice and sin, for you free it from the bridle of the fear of the Lord, with which you should be curbing it lest it go to perdition. At such a time you are looking to the devil, as he himself looked to wickedness when he fell into death. And, rejoicing in your perdition, he says, here is a person who is like us. And then he falls on you and instills into you at his will his death-shadowed ways. But God knows what good you are capable of. For the law is laid down for you according to what you can perform. God wishes from the beginning to the end of the world to take pleasure in his elect, that they may be faithfully crowned, adorned with the brightness of virtue. How shall this be? Let man resist the pleasure of the flesh, lest he be caught up in the delights of the world and let him not live securely, as if he could remain in the house he inhabits for he is a pilgrim, whose father awaits him if he chooses to return to him in the place where he knows he is. Therefore, O human, if you turn your eyes to the two roads, good and evil, then you will learn, for you will understand both great things and small. How? Through faith you know the one God, in his divinity and humanity and in evil you see the devil's works. And when you know the just and the unjust roads, I will question you, which road do you wish to travel on? If you wish to travel in good paths, and if you faithfully hear my words, pray to God assiduously and sincerely to help you and not abandon you, since your flesh is fragile and bow your head in humility, and shake off and quickly cast away from you such of your works as are evil. God requires this of you. For what if someone were to offer you gold and lead, and say, stretch out your hand for whichever you want? You would eagerly seize the gold and leave the lead, for you love gold better than lead. So too you should prefer the country of heaven to the downward slope of sin. But if you have fallen into sin, quickly rise by confession and pure penitence, before death lays claim to you. For your father wants you to cry out, weep and ask for help so as not to remain in the squalor of sin. For if you have been wounded, you seek a physician lest you die. Does not God often send people troubles, so that they will more intently invoke him? But you, O oh human, say, I cannot do good works. I say you can. And you say, how? And I say, by thought and action. And you answer, I lack decision. And I answer, learn to fight against yourself. And you say, I cannot fight against myself unless God helps me. Here, then how you can fight against yourself. When evil rises up in you and you do not know how co get rid of it, then, touched by my grace, which reaches you in the paths of your inner vision, at once cry out, pray, confess and weep so that God will help you and remove evil from you and grant you strength and good. For this good is yours by the knowledge that lets you understand God by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. If you were someone's workman, oh! How often you would have to do what your body found difficult. Would you not bear many trials for the sake of your earthly wages? Then why do you not serve God, who gave you both soul and body, for the sake of heavenly wages? For one if you wanted to possess a temporal object, oh, how you would labor that you might have it quickly. But now it wearies you to seek what has no end. As the ox is roused by the goad, so you should exert yourself in body for fear of the Lord if you do, God will not cast you out. If some tyrant were to capture you, you would at once turn to anyone who could help you, and beg him, pray him, and promise him your property if he would come to your aid. Do this also, O oh human, when iniquity captures you turn to God, beg, pray and promise him your reformation, and he will help you. But you, O oh human, are blind when you need to see, deaf when you need to hear and senseless when you need to defend yourself, since the intellect and the five bodily senses God gave you are no more to you than filth and emptiness. Do you not have intellect and knowledge? The kingdom of God can be bought, but not acquired in jest. Hear therefore, O humanity, and do not despise entry into the heavenly Jerusalem, or touch death, or deny God and acknowledge the devil, or increase in sins and diminish in good deeds. You do not wish to hear God, when you refuse to walk in his precepts, and you run to the devil, when you seek to gratify the pleasure of your flesh. 
Recover therefore and be strengthened, for it is necessary for you. So let the faithful person recognize his pain and seek a physician before he falls dead. If he considers his pain and seeks a physician, the latter when found will show him the bitter medicine that can save him that is, the bitter words by which he must be tested to see whether his penitence comes from the root of his heart or only from his unstable breath. And when he has tested this, he will give him the wine of penitence, with which to wash away the pus from his wounds, and the oil of mercy, with which to anoint the wounds to heal them. Then he will enjoin him to be careful of his health, saying, See that you keep taking this medicine carefully and regularly, and do not tire of it, for your wounds are serious. There are many who accept penance for their sins only with difficulty but, though with much effort, they nonetheless carry it out for fear of death. But I give them my hand, and change their bitterness into sweetness, so that they may fulfill tranquilly that penance they began with such difficulty. But he who neglects repentance for his sins, saying it is hard for him to chastise his body, will be wretched, for he does not want to look at himself, or seek a physician, or have his wounds healed but hides the dreadful wound in himself and covers over death with false appearances to conceal it. Thus he is averse to tasting penance, unwilling to look to the oil of mercy or seek the consolation of redemption and so he will go into death, since he has loved death and not sought the kingdom of God. Therefore, O ye faithful, run in God's precepts lest the damnation of death seize upon you. Imitate the new Adam and cast off the old. For to him who runs, the kingdom of God is open but to him who lies on the ground it is closed. But miserable are they who worship the devil, not knowing God. How? Because they do not adore one God in Trinity and do not seek to know the Trinity in unity. So let the one who wishes to be saved be unwavering in the true Catholic faith. What is this? 31. On the Catholic Faith He who denies the Son does not worship the Father, and he who does not know the Father does not love the Son, and he who rejects the Holy Spirit has neither the Father or the Son, and he who does not adore the Father and the Son does not receive the Holy Spirit. Therefore the unity must be understood in the Trinity, and the Trinity in the unity. O oh, human, can you be alive without a heart and without blood? Even so it must not be believed that the Father is without the Son or the Holy Spirit, or the Son without the Father and the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit without them. For the redemption of humanity the Father sent the Son into the world and then took him back to himself, the way a person sends out the thoughts of his heart and then recalls them to himself. Wherefore Isaiah speaks of the salvific mission of God's only begotten by the will of the celestial majesty, saying. 32. Words of Isaiah The Lord sent a word unto Jacob, and it has lighted upon Israel, Isaiah 9 verse 8. Which is to say, the Lord, that is the supernal Father, sent the Word by whom all things were made, that is God's only begotten, who was in divinity in the Father's heart forever without any beginning, into Jacob through the mouths of the prophets and they faithfully foretold that the same Son of God would come into the world for human salvation, so that people forewarned and strengthened by them could overthrow the devil and wisely reject his crafty deceptions. And the same Word lighted upon Israel when the only begotten of God came into the high fecundity of the Virgin, into which no man had penetrated but which had inviolably kept its flower, so that he, born of the Virgin, might lead back those who were erroneously blind to the light of truth into the true way. Therefore whoever has knowledge in the Holy Spirit and wings of faith, let this one not ignore my admonition, but taste it, embrace it and receive it in his soul.